Hello my friends, it's great to have you back. Today I've come to share with you the outcome of the attempt to breed the Ganagaras. First of all, I'd like to thank you all for the active participation and the valuable suggestions I receive along the way. I was waiting in the Can't touch the bottom. First of all, let's take a quick look back. I decided to try breeding the Ganakars uh, more in a, an attempt to ease the conflicts that were going on in the main aquarium with the Altums, which I couldn't live with. At first, uh, I was very excited about the prospect of this idea, but let's see what happened. Following the brilliant suggestions I received from you, I made essential changes. I've darkened the environment and added botanicals to simulate the natural conditions. In addition, I insert a larger cave to create a more conditions to them. After a week in which the Gyanakaras didn't interact as they did in the main aquarium, and reading your suggestions, I decided to redo everything, removing the sand to make it easier to maintain a clean environment. Having noticed that the caves I put in seemed too small for the two Guiana cars, I decided to take them out and put in a bigger one made of clay so that they can uh, have more space to drop their eggs, be more oxygenated and more comfortable to take care of the eggs and then the fry. This clay pot seems perfect to me as it has a flat side which allows it to be kept firmly at the bottom of the aquarium. I thought the material of the pot was ideal, since uh, it's the same material used for other cichlids to lay their eggs. I also received comments suggesting that the cichlids liked it a darker background, so I put a PVC sheet on the back glass to darken that area instead the frozen white background it has. To darken the aquarium even more while also giving them more privacy, comfort and sense of security, I put black bags on the sides so that there would be no stress and they would feel safe to breathe. It's the coldest hand to run down this land where the ocean lands. It's a tall the bags are attached to the glass using static electricity, which makes them easier to place. Honestly, I didn't expect it to be so easy. Now comes the botanicals part, something that was also highly suggested in the comments by some of you. I boiled some catapa leaves and some botanicals to give the fry shelter and the water humic and antifungal properties. Actually, I had some doubts as to whether I should add so many botanicals, as it could acidify and change the pH too much, but I added this amount anyway. For those who don't know, the humic and antifungal properties of botanicals are very good for the well-being of fish. Botanicals should be boiled before use to kill any pathogens that may be present and to help them uh, sink more quickly. It's a sharpest cry 
the head goes bit wide where the desperate lie putting botanicals in water after they have been boiled does not guarantee that they will sink immediately some will sink straight away others will take days and others weeks it depends on their ability to absorb water Stick with me and I left the tank like this for almost 60 days the behavior of the supposed uh, couple didn't improve at all during those days the female who couldn't uh, find shelter in the clay pot always stayed outside while the male never left the pot for maintenance, I only changed 20% of water twice a week and always kept the lights off or uh, on very short periods at low intensity. I put a surveillance camera so I could watch them when I was away from home and uh, as you can see I kept the black bags on the sides of the aquarium. With me. Never last Even with all these conditions, they didn't seem to want to get as close as they did in the main aquarium. You go, I see. To give you an idea of how the male protects his territory, look at how he reacts when I move the hose close to the entrance of the clay pot. If he does that with the hose, imagine the poor female when she gets close to him. Right from the start, I didn't see a good chance of them breeding, and these behaviors were the ones that showed me that this project really wasn't going to succeed. At the end of those 60 days, I gradually removed the botanicals to prepare them for new waters. By this I mean that, uh, to, the, to my great regret, I'm going to try to sell my Genecaras to someone who can have them without them disturbing the other inhabitants of the aquarium. As I said before, in the near future I have a big new project in mind which doesn't fit in with this behavior of constant chasing that the Gienekars were doing to the Altums in the main aquarium. Believe me, I am really sorry to get rid of them, but I have to. Before closing this video, it's important to remember that uh, my initial intention was separate the Gienekars from the Altums in the main aquarium as they were causing an imbalance in the harmony of the tank. Unfortunately, uh, given the results I've shared today, I find myself in the difficult position of having to say goodbye to this spectacular uh, fish. For the project I have in mind for the near future, I can allow this kind of behavior uh, in the aquarium. It's a difficult decision as I have a great fondness uh, for these animals. However, between keeping the Genekars and realizing my new project, uh, the choice is clear. These are decisions that are part of the aquarium journey. I close this video by reminding us all of the unpredictable nature of aquarium keeping. It's a hobby that challenges us teaches and surprises every day. Thank you for your support and until the next video.